Welcome to 20th and Blake. Game two of a three-game set between the Rockies and the Milwaukee Brewers on a Saturday afternoon. And yes, that's the tarp being pulled onto the field. It is not raining yet. There is a cell in the area. And so rather than get started and perhaps uh, have to go into a delay, we are going to put the tarp on the field evidently and, and wait a few minutes and hopefully the rain passes through very quickly and we can have uh, the ball game started and then not be interrupted. So that's the uh, game plan coming up here on a Saturday. Welcome upstairs everybody with George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Obviously the Rockies trying to bounce back a tough night last night. The offense was good on the pitching side. They give up 13 and fall 13 to 10. A number of moves today George. A lot of moves happen today and it, it is what it is but I think the big thing for me it's a positive. You got to look at that. Friedrich's called up to make a start today. Numbers in Triple Eight, not great. Who cares? You're getting that opportunity. Take advantage of it. Chris Martin to make room. Kyle Parker. Michael Kadire goes to the 60. And Wilton Lopez is back in the bullpen again because they need arms in that bullpen right now after what happened yesterday. Turn all of this into a positive, not a negative. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of injuries on this team right now. Guys getting opportunities probably would not have gotten. Run with it. See what you can do and make a point while you're here. Well, Christian Friedrich, as you mentioned, will make the start. He's familiar with pitching in the big leagues. He's battled back issues. He becomes the 11th starting pitcher for the Rockies this year. That's more than any other team has had to use in baseball this and, year. Hey, it's difficult. There's no question. You look at his overall record at the big league level, 5-8. and eight, But a year ago, there was flashes, a couple of years ago, I should say, flashes of what this number one can be, what I saw in Asheville, what I saw in Tulsa at times, that he can flash the big breaking ball. He's got a good fastball. He's had some tough luck. He made Six straight starts in Colorado Springs did not pitch very well. Then he made some really good starts out on the road. He's prepared for this mentally instead of running out another young player that may not be prepared for it. You're getting an advantage, man. Take and run with this thing. Absolutely. So Christian Friedrich will be on the hill. When we come back, we'll talk about a guy that has been lights out offensively all year. And once again, last night, Corey Dickerson, part of the Rockies' big offensive display.
is on the field, so the start of the game will be delayed, at least briefly, with a cell in the area. Mark Stout down by the Rockies' dugout. I want to go back to one year ago when Corey Dickerson was down with the Sky Sox. He had gone three for four in the game, was pulled out, found out he was going to the show. You'll see Charlie Culberson hit him with a pie in the face right there. Matt McBride, another Rocky that you probably recognize, giving him some hugs, and this is really cool. You're going to see his brother and his sister-in-law in the hallway when they found out that he was going to the bigs, and they got pretty excited. That was a year ago. Corey would get called up. He told me he left at 6 a.m. on a Friday, got there at 3 to Washington, D.C., did not play in the Friday night game, but did play in that Saturday game on June 22nd, and he went two for four in his debut. I want to go back to last night when Corey Dickerson came up with his second four-hit game of his career. Early on, he had a single to left. He had a roller that went for a single. And then in his fourth at bat in the game, Watch him go deep as he cranks one down the line to left field right there into the second deck, a four for five night. He is now one hit away from 100 in his career. And if you go back to August the 1st of last season, there are three Rockies that have played at least 100 games and are hitting 300 or better. It's Troy Tulowitzki, it's Charlie Blackman, and it's none other than Corey Dickerson. Basically, half of his hits have gone for extra bases. This guy is in the lineup again today, obviously, after a four-hit game. He will hit fifth this afternoon and play left field. Corey Dickerson has been a guy that can rake, and his defense has improved, and the Rockies are relying on him. As Drew and George were saying, injuries mean other guys get to step up. Number six is a guy that has done just that. We'll come back to Coors Field and get you an update on the start time as the Rockies and the Brewers await the first pitch of his second game of a three-game weekend set here at 20th and Blake. off the field that means baseball is not far away in fact we can tell you first pitch is going to come at 2 30 so it's a little less than 20 minutes from now we'll have first pitch the Rockies and Milwaukee Brewers Christian Friedrich and Willie Peralta Christian's uh, return to the big leagues till then we're going to take you to Rockies real time we'll see you in a few minutes folks enjoy
to Coors Field for the bullpen. As he's ready to go, the Rockies game two against the Brewers. Brewers had the best record in the National League, second best record in baseball to the Oakland A's at 45 and 30. The Rockies come into this affair at 34 and 39. So for Christian Friedrich George, it'll be his first start this year. And he's been pitching down in Colorado Springs. He's a guy that I think opened a lot of eyes. I remember this start vividly a couple of years ago in San Diego. He looked like Cliff Lee. Well, he looked like the guy that was going to be around at the big league level for a long time. And then the back injuries are what grabbed a hold of him. And I think that's one thing that he's had to battle. He's going to face Ricky Weeks and the Brewers today in hopes that things uh, turn around for them. You see Weeks' numbers this season in 55 ball games. He's hit 269. He scored 16 runs, more in a backup role, 31 pinch hit appearances for Ricky Weeks. And there is Ricky Weeks. Here's the rest of Ron Ranicki's starting lineup. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. And the Brewers will have Ryan Braun in the two spot. Jonathan Lucroy second in the National League and hitting will bat third. Carlos Gomez will bat cleanup. Aramis Ramirez, the veteran run producer at third base. Chris Davis has 13 home runs. Mark Reynolds, 13 home runs. Gene Segura hit two last night. And Willie Peralta. Let's take a look at Christian Friedrich out of Eastern Kentucky. His number is brought to you by Anova Cancer Care. Treat prostate cancer in only five sessions. Well, you look at his major league career, 16 starts that he's made, five and eight overall record in 84 innings, 74 strikeouts. Uh, Christian's made some adjustments through his delivery. More online now, straight over the top a little bit, quicker, shorter arm action. Well, I just hope he runs with it today and take advantage of this start that he's getting here on a Saturday afternoon and a beautiful, beautiful day for baseball. And here's who's handling things behind Friedrich today. It's brought to you by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com to learn more. Corey Dickerson's in left, Drew Stubbs in center, Charlie Blackman's in right. Rutledge and Tulowitzki left side, DJ LeMayu, Justin Morneau had a big day yesterday. He's on the right side with Michael McHenry doing the catching. Of course, Michael caught uh, a number of Friedrich starts down in Colorado Springs. He has worked really hard to get back here with the battle, George, as you know, and talked about with the back issues. And he's also a guy that a couple of years ago remade his body. Well, he really did. He got serious about the game of baseball, was challenged by the organization. He went to work in the gym. Moved down to Florida, did an awful lot of work down there, and then he came to camp. And uh, I tell you what, I just hope he comes out tonight, uh, today I should say. And as the guy that I've seen in the past uh, at the minor league level and throwing the ball extremely well and get through this first inning, kind of ease that on down and then get prepared for that uh, next inning and go one at a time. I hope he throws well today. So we're ready for baseball as Rookie Weeks makes that walk to home plate, a career average of a little above 300 at Coors Field with three home runs. Ricky has lost a lot of his playing time to Scooter Jeanette. And Jeanette not starting, obviously, this afternoon at second base. Ricky at a Southern University. Big, strong second baseman, and that's more the norm now. Than certainly it was when you were playing the game. Well, no question. Just like guys up the middle, if they hit 220 and picked everything, you were just tickled pink. Now it's about hitting home runs, driving runs in. That all changed with A Rod, Nomar Garcia Parra, Derek Jeter. Ricky in a slump, just one for his last 19. Christian's first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. 23 minute weather delay, even though it didn't rain, but just uh, because there was a possibility of it, they made sure and did the prudent thing. And rather than have your pitchers get out there and be firing away and then have to sit down. Now yeah, that's the key. You don't want to burn up a starter or have him warm up and set 45 minutes to an hour and then try to get him back up again. It's too difficult, too, uh, too big of a risk for injury. Here's the 0 2 on weeks, high fastball at 93. The one two to Weeks is uh, again fouled off. You know, 
Friedrich will have a four pitch mix and the curveball you'll see two different curveballs one with less velocity. One that he'll tighten up the break on more of a 12 six he'll throw a hard slider change and fastball. And good start Friedrich with a strikeout of Ricky Weeks to begin things. Yeah through the curveball at 77 miles an hour well on top of this pitch brought it from outside in and got the swing and miss off weeks a great great start. For Christian Friedrich in the Rockies love to see the strikeout. That has to give I know it's one out George but it's been. Such a difficult process to get back here give them a little boost one and eight. I mean that's not something you, you want to jump out there at with a 789 ERA so. Yeah I mean you get that first strikeout. The booze cascade down for Ryan Braun. He's heard him in every building he's been in, save his home ballpark of Miller Park. And Brian Anderson was actually saying, Brian's the uh, television voice on the Milwaukee side, was actually saying the booze here have not been nearly as vociferous as most ballparks. Here's the 1 0 on Braun, and he got the fastball by him. It's 1 and 1. Well, here's the thing about Christian, and this is what a, an old coach said to me one time. You can't control the past. You can only control your destiny and what's out in front of you. And this is what's out in front of him today a major league start. The past is gone. And one and two on Braun as he came up and in. Now the Brewers are 12 and 5 this year against left handed starters. That's the best in the, in the major league. And they also are 25 and 15 out on the road. That is the best in the big leagues. See, I like the aggressiveness of Christian Friedrich. Anytime hitters are asking for an umpire to hold it. In the air to Dickerson in left. Easy play. Two outs. Two gone and Jonathan Lucroy will come up. Lucroy batting 338. Second to Troy's 363 in the National League. Time you have a catcher. For me, George hitting above 280. That's really saying something. Well, he's had a career year this year. There's no question about it. You see what he's done in the series and what he has done of late. The 38 RBIs. Third right now in the National League and voting among catchers. Molina leads it. Posey is second, and uh, Lucroy is third. And he's done most of his damage out on the road. He's hitting a National League best 386 on the road. That's down 2 and 0. Oh. But see what you see from McHenry. He threw the pitch and it was down low. But I mean it's a pretty good pitch. McHenry gives him a fist pump with the glove and throws the ball back to him. You threw it right where I wanted it. Just off the outside corner evidently and it's 3 and 0. Oh. Lucroy had a base hit last night, 1 for 5. Lucroy on occasion will play first base just to keep his bat in the lineup. Yeah, he's had four starts at first base this year. And uh, you know that's similar to what you're seeing what's going on with Buster Posey. We haven't done that in. Uh, St. Louis yet. Well Yachty catches every day. It's ridiculous. Here's the three one and that's fouled off. Yeah, the backup catcher there may as well be the bat boy because you're not getting in the lineup. He's the old Maytag repairman. I'm telling you, it ain't happening. Here's the road numbers we were alluding to, and his teammates right behind him, Carlos Gomez, hitting 355. One of the reasons they've been so successful out on the road. They score a lot of runs out on the road. Here's the 3 2 on Lucroy. And this is popped up right side. It's going to be a real nice start for Christian Friedrich in his return to the big leagues. He has a one, two, three first. Well done.
Sitting. Rocky, Rocky's getting ready to face Willie Peralta, our throwing right hander. Charlie Blackman at 303 will be atop Walt Weiss's lineup, brought to you each day by Southwest Airlines. Drew Stubbs will bat second this afternoon, then Tulowitzki leading the league at 363. Morneau had five ribbies yesterday. Corey Dickerson had a big day yesterday as well, including a home run. Josh Rutledge, Michael McHenry, DJ LeMahieu, and Christian Friedrich against uh, a guy who run that sinker, George, up to 97 or so. He has a great arm, there's no question. 14 games he started this year, no complete ball game. 7 and 5, 298 earned run average a year ago. Peralta 11 and 15 with a 4.35. Now his last four starts, his record is three and one with an ERA of 5.25. They've scored a lot of runs for him. The first 10 starts this year, he had an earned run average of 2.12. Still very good. He's pitched well out on the road. 276 earned run average on the road. That's the 10th best in the National League. And those numbers are brought to you by Nova Cancer Care. Treat prostate cancer in only five sessions. So here we go with Charlie Blackman. And Charlie takes ball one. Willie Peralta, native of the Dominican Republic. With solid pitching body. 6'1". He's listed at 245 pounds. And it's back up the middle, a base hit on a 94 mile an hour fastball. So Blackman reaches. And the Rockies are in business. A year ago, a lot of scouts compared him to a Juan Nicasio type. Big arm, 93 to 97 fastball, decent slider change. It's gotten a little better this year. He took a step forward with his secondary stuff. Milwaukee defensively brought to you by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com today to learn more. An outfield to Chris Davis, Carlos Gomez is as good as they come in center field. Ryan Braun this year moved from left field to right field. You saw the infield. Mark Reynolds at first, and this ball's fouled off. A couple of uh, older veterans, and when you got Reynolds and Overbay, that platoon back and forth. And then, of course, you had Ramirez at third base, a guy that's been around a long time. And uh, you start to look at some of the numbers he's put up. We'll get to those later. Reynolds is going to strike out a lot, not hit for an average, but he's going to hit the ball over the wall. Stubbs did not play last night. You know, Barnes started last night, had a mixed bag. He struck out four times, but hit a home run, a big home run. He got to jog, Drew, around the bases. He didn't have to dive into home plate. You know, I was, was good-naturedly kidding him about that because that was his line this morning in the clubhouse. And he said, yeah, but I made four left turns. This ball's hit hard, bobbled by Weeks. Ball goes flying into center field. Blackman won't advance. Safe at second is Charlie. That is as strange as I've ever seen. What happened? The ball was hit extremely hard right at Weeks, and then Weeks didn't handle it. So then Weeks tried to battle back to get a hold of the baseball to tag out Charlie Blackman. Charlie's foot hit his glove and popped the ball completely out of it. Right here, you see catching. Maybe not the glove, but the body. And then the ball just flies completely out. Weeks got eat up on the bit on the ball hit right at him. But a Mike Shaw Subaru Superman and right here he's going to tag and you see Charlie put his hands up. What he did his his force of coming in a second flipped that ball completely out of Ricky Weeks' glove. And the Rockies got a chance to score some big runs and, and early in this ball game. And boy what a lift that would be for Christian Friedrich to have that breathing room. And the right guy is at the plate and Troy Tulowitzki. Yeah, Troy had a big night last night. Three for four, including a double, scored a couple runs, also walked. When you're hitting 360, it's hard to move your average up. Tulo did yesterday. He's at 363. Blackman takes off. Trail runner goes. Double steal. Stubbs made sure that Blackman was going to go. And then he went and Lucroy. Had nowhere to go with the baseball. Stolen base 13 for Blackman, 8 for Stubbs. And that's one of the beautiful things, Frazier, about having those two guys on base at the same time. Well, you got a lot of speed at the top, that's for sure. And you're not expecting it after you had a ground ball base hit, a ground ball double play that gets botched. And as a catcher pitcher, you're just trying to get through the hottest hitter in baseball with Tudowitzki. And then, hey, you got second, third now. Here's the 0 1 inside. At 96. And it's a ball and a strike on 
Tula with 18 home runs, 45 driven in. He's second on the club in ribbies to Morneau, who moved up into that first spot with a five RBI night yesterday. He's got 49. Troy last night passed another milestone. Moved into the 600 run scored club. One of five Rockies all time to produce at least 600 runs. Todd Helton on top, 1,401. Then Walker, Bichette, and Castilla. Off the plate, good eye. Two and one. Nobody out. Blackman at third, Stubbs at second. Willie Peralta doesn't have real fond memories of Coors Field. His only other start here came last July. He gave up eight runs, five earned, and three and a third. And this is blue. That's going to be grabbed off top by Ricky Weeks. No cone job, but he had it the whole way. One out. Yeah, just enough of that sinker on the hands of Tulo and then just came up a little short another foot farther You got a couple of runs So, so here's some of Morneau's day yesterday two for five a double and a home run the three uh, the home run was a three run jack and a little miscommunication out there in left center field that was scored a double and scored two and then the uh, Home run into the seats over the auxiliary scoreboard. Who's Hot's brought to you by Weber. Weber, serious grills for unserious times. How about uh, what he's done the last 11 days? He's driven in 15, which is the best in baseball. See Jonathan Lucroy on that list. Two and out. Well, it's not going to get any easier. Corey Dickerson in the on deck circle, 343 average with 27 RBIs and nine home runs. You know, if you're thinking first base open, one out, I'll go to the next guy, I'll go to the young guy in the on deck circle and see if I can get a double play ball. Yeah, good point. Or no, hitting 320 against righties, base hit left field. Just served it there. Stubbs will get a green light. Here's the throw, it's online, but won't get close. And it's two more ribbies for Justin Morneau. And the Rockies break on top, two to nothing. What a great piece of hit. He didn't try to do too much, ball out away from him. And he just lined it as Tony Gwynn would do, George, through that five and a half hole, basically. Yes, he did. They had to shift on. They had a third baseman kind of playing a little off of the line. So out of the hand, you see it on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mode, trying to run that sinker down and away. And he got out on that front foot, but what he does so well is the hands stay back. And he goes with the pitch very, very well. And he has sliced that into left field as Stubbs and Blackman score. A couple of hits, and now you got a pitching coach out. Rick Krantz is a little disappointed right now on a couple of things. Making pitches, going right at the hitters, and I think he's I think he'd like to see a couple of the pitches behind the plate to be tightened up a little bit. You know, Rick, very accomplished pitching coach, been around a long time. So with one out, Dickerson, who had four knocks yesterday, including a home run, will come up. Four for five, three ribbies for Corey. Well, he really likes it when the Brewers come to town. Seven for ten in his career against Milwaukee. He's hitting 359 against righties. He takes strike one. Who wants tacos? Remember, if the Rockies score seven or more as they did yesterday, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six. You can do that a little later and get your Rockies taco special at Masa Taco Bell.
Ball and a strike on Dickerson. A home run yesterday came off of a lefty, which was the uh, Zach Duke was the first time he's gone deep against a lefty this year. He doesn't have many at bats, quite honestly, against lefties. Just 23, and he's hitting a respectable 261. Home run hack on a 97 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, last night he got just what he wanted. He got a fastball to stay down on the inner half of the plate in the lower part of the zone. He crossed it up into the second deck. Here's the one two. Two and two. Both the Rockies and Brewers put on a showcase for hitting with two strikes yesterday. The Brewers, believe it or not, had 26 two strike at bats, yet they had 11 hits. I mean, you want to put guys away when you're pitching, you got two strikes. The Rockies had 10 two strike hits mm -hmm. last night themselves. A lot of 1 2 0 oh, 2 hits. 2 2. Strike three. Wow. Really? See, when a breaking ball comes far from the outside to that corner, you you know, as a hitter, you're looking at it, you can't swing at it because it, it's out here. And then it just comes to that outside edge there. Even though you squared it up, you can see on a fourth strike zone, not a strike. It looked like it was off the plate a little bit, so two outs, and that'll bring up Rutledge. Josh getting more and more time at third base. Walt said a few days ago in L.A. He just wants to keep D.J. at second base. D.J. did a fine job at third. He's so versatile, but you keep that middle of the infield intact. And so That's Rudd, important. Yeah, and so Rudd, who, who the last time he played third base was in high school, junior year a little bit. He's getting the work there. Rutledge since his last recall hitting 351. And that uh, despite going 0 for 5 last night. Rockies up 2 nothing here at the first. This ball's lifted to right field. Braun will have a play, and that puts down the inning. But the Rockies had a hit, an error, and then a big two-run hit from Morneau. And they take a 2 nothing lead. Morneau with RBIs 50 and 51. Good start for Colorado. Ball on Root Sports is brought to you by 
your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Inova Cancer Care, treat prostate cancer painlessly in only five sessions with minimal side effects. Visit InnovaCC.com. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at Southwest.com. This is Sloan's Lake. And George, the last time I went water skiing, it's been like 20 years, but I was, it was at Sloan's Lake. Really? Yeah, not very good. Look how I, fast they're going. Look, really? see it? Look, yeah, look how fast it, Wow. I didn't go that fast. You didn't? No. I'm not even sure what that was. Was that a boat? It looked like a boat. Yeah. Friedrich right back to work again. And you have to strike one on Gomez. This guy yesterday took some hacks, some swings that were unbelievable, much like the first one he took there on that fastball offering from Friedrich. He's another guy in these days of loose uniforms. It's hard to tell how big and strong some guys are. Back in your day when you all wore those tight unis, you could tell mm -hmm. who was really built. This is one strong guy. Extremely strong. Uh, the Twins obviously traded him over here, and he has turned into an all-star player. 6-3, two and a quarter, and a tough drive for yeah. Rutledge. And now Gomez, the hustles, will be at second base. You could see it coming the whole way. Because it's the third baseman, the ball was not hit hard. You can't sit back and wait on it. Gomez has too good a speed. But a difficult play for Josh Rutledge. He's going to try to come up and backhand it right on the line. And as he does, the ball does skip to the right side. And it's easy to say, yeah, Nolan would have made that play 99% of the time. But you got Rudd over there not playing a whole lot at third base. Mike Shaw Super is super mo. You can see as he gets there, then he'll make that turn and take off as the ball went down by the tarp area. And it scored a double. And now he has reached it 34 straight games. And the all time, the number one guy in the all time. List for reaching for Milwaukee Brewers, a former Rocky, Scott Pesetna. It's a do or die play. Absolutely, it is. Very difficult play. Especially with a guy who can really run in Carlos Gomez. Aramis Ramirez. You know, in his career, and I know you kind of alluded to this earlier, George, and every time we see the Brewers, we we mention this. He's been one of the best run producers the last 10 or 12 years in baseball. And, you, and now you look at his overall numbers and you say, wait a second, those are kind of historically good. He's hit 285 in his career with 300, and I'm, I got to do some math here, 362 home runs. And he's driven in over 1,300. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable how many times he's just come up huge uh, for different organizations. And Cubs traded him to the Pirates, Pirates to Milwaukee. And he got to the big leagues at a, at a real tender age. So he's not ancient. He's 35 now, but in fact, he'll celebrate another birthday in Milwaukee. On Wednesday, when he turns 36, he's in better shape now than his days in, in Pittsburgh. Well, a lot of that is, you, you know, you learn a lot of things about your body and what you have to do to take care of it. This is to right field. Blackman coming on and momentum going toward third. Throw there is a little offline. Gomez almost overslid the bag, which seems to be a, a daily occurrence in baseball now. Yeah, it seems like a lot of head first slides. Guys sliding by the bag, trying to grab it with their hands, but a lot of times it's uh, difficult to do. Here's another look at the throw from Charlie. He gets it right out front, perfect positioning, and then it throws just offline. The ball beat him there, but not in 10. The Rockies number one in the National League with runners in scoring position 282, but Milwaukee second at 275. So Chris Davis steps up. They appealed to second to see if he went early. Yeah, Tudor Whiskey thinks he left early. That's why he's having Friedrich do it. 
kind of standing in the middle here. Going to step off. They'll make the. Oh Whoa. boy. Dude, boy. Chris, don't do that to me. You know, usually in that situation, Troy walked in next to the mound, usually just in case, kind of like oh, when, a first, back yeah, when a first baseman on a pick play throws back to the pitcher, the third baseman comes down just on the, you know, one in a thousand that he happens to throw by him. And mm -hmm. he almost threw that ball in the center field. Gomez would have scored. The key to that, George, and I've, I know you've seen it the other way. You have to step off the back of the rubber. You cannot pick to an empty base. No, be you have to step off, call time, and you have to throw the baseball. This is on the ground to third. Rutledge has trouble with it for the first, not going to get him, and he throws it away. And now Davis will move up to second, and Rutledge with the error. And now in a two to one ball game, you have the tying run in scoring position. It's all about reaction at third base, trying to get it to a good hop, trying to be able to feel the ball cleanly so you can make a play on it. I think Rudd actually looked at Gomez when he went to pick this baseball and then just fired it up into the air. There's one more to look at it. That ball jumped up, got him right on the heel. It was shot away from him. He tried to recover to get the out at first base, overthrew Morneau, and that allowed the runners to advance. That's a, a straight E5. Davis does get a ribby. And this is a base hit up the middle. It's going to tie up the game. So Mark Reynolds ties it at two. And in fairness to Christian Friedrich, the ball really hasn't left the infield other than the shallow fly ball. And I'll be honest, I think the first play was ruled a double, in my opinion, was an error. And then obviously the other error, that allowed the run in, and then now a base hit. You know, get a ball on the ground, get you double play, and get out of this thing. You know, Jimmy Wright just giving everybody a little bit of a breather here and a confidence boost to Christian. Yeah, I feel bad for Rudd. I mean, you haven't played over there, and the last thing you want to do you start to uh, have that ball hunt you down, make a couple errors. You just, golly, it just tears you up on the inside. Fans, tweet your questions using the hashtag Toyota Talk and watch as we answer your questions during the fifth inning of every ball game. Gene Segura will come up. He had a career night last night, two home runs. He had, he had two coming in. Twelve a year ago. Here's a look at what he did last night. Hang a break ball for the first one. Just got over the fence and left center right there on the edge. The next one a little more dramatic. He got a hold of it. And he said today, actually he said it last night after the ball game that he goes, boy, the ball really flies here. I'm just trying to make contact. And it was a, a night where the ball really flew. Warm night, no wind. 83 degrees our game time temperature this afternoon. And the game was delayed by about 23 minutes and that squared him up in the back. See there, yeah, to cut fastball and uh, cut a little bit over Ampton, caught right into the middle of the back, right there in that small of the back. That didn't feel good. On well, the Mike Shaw Super Super Mo sets up the double play, right? By the way, last night was the 25th time in Brewers history of allowing 10 runs and still winning the ball game. The last happened on July the 3rd, 2012. That was against the Miami Marlins. Fifth time this year the Rockies have scored eight or more in a game and lost. And it's the third time they've scored ten in a game this year and been on the wrong side. Willie Peralta, not much of an average this year, 080 as a couple of ribbies. However, 
this spring training. I mean, we told you he's a big dude. This spring training, he had a couple of home runs. A little surprise there, though. 2 2 ball game, one out, advance him up, let Weeks have a shot at driving in two. Yeah, he got the swing it. He's still swinging. And that may be in deference to the ballpark if you're Ron Renneke, figuring we're not playing for, you know, a run or two. We're, we're playing for big innings throughout, especially coming off of last night where we needed double digits to win the baseball game. And this is a double play ball. And that's the risk you take. And the takeout by Segura is going to cost the Rockies a run. Gene Segura kind of getting back at the Rockies really got into DJ LeMayhew and he caused the error. And he's going to get a lot of high fives in his dugout. It's good hard nosed baseball, but unfortunately, DJ's, who's good as anybody turning the double play, got flipped and the ball in the dirt. Second error for the Rockies in the inning, and now it's three to two Milwaukee. Yeah, you see Segura coming in hard here, and he does get into him. Normally, DJ will go to the backside, but he thought he had time to come across the bag and stay on the line, and then that's when Segura got after him and flipped him. And the short throw over to Morneau does not come up into the leather, but into the into the dugout. Peralta goes to second, and Weeks is at the plate. He struck out, leading off the game. It's been a, an ugly inning for the Rockies. A couple of hits, a couple of errors. All of a sudden, Milwaukee's on top 3 2. Yeah, it could have been three errors. Another look at Weeks coming into second base. I mean, excuse me, Segura coming in. More of a jump into that bag than it was a slide. This is a base hit, and Peralta will come around. This goes all the way to the wall. Ricky Weeks thinking triple. And he'll have it easily. Four runs here in the second inning. That was the only hard hit ball of the inning. Weeks comes up. Let's look at this pitch from Friedrich. That is now look at this pitch. It's on the ankles, it's on the inner half, and it's down. Sometimes you tip the cap to who uh, how hard they practice. 14 RBIs now for Rick. Was that in against that wall? That's what bought him that uh, opportunity to get into third base. It was that simple fact that ball got jammed up on the wall, and then his third base coach pointing at the ground like get on the bag and hold up but he thought it was a head first slide he got caught in between there Ryan Braun and he takes a breaking ball for a strike he had a fly ball to left his first time up eighth man to hit here in the second inning against Friedrich Braun is a career 330 hitter against the Rockies. He tops this one foul, and it's nothing in two. Got him with a cut fastball up and in the last time up, and he jammed him, and he hit, hit the ball to shallow right field that DJ was able to make a play on. Two and he got him to swing at a slider in the dirt. Good pitch. McHenry will get the out at first. Tough inning for the Rockies defensively. They give up four runs. Just three hits.
couple of errors in that top of the inning didn't help Christian Friedrich. Mike McHenry leads off this half inning. He's also catching him because he caught a bulk of the starts that Friedrich made down at Triple A Sky Sox. If he comes out and he does his thing, I mean, he can shut down any lineup in the, you know, in the major leagues. He's just got to come out and stay focused and do his do his thing. Like I said, he's got four quality pitches. He's got two uh, devastating breaking balls. And um, he's just got to think about locating. And this aggressive team he's going to pitch against today, he's got to expand the zone and do his thing. George, George, as you said, this has kind of been a recurring theme with McHenry because so many guys have had to come up. That's not a good thing, but helpful. And he did say that he is hit against Friedrich, so maybe that can be a benefit as well. Well, you know what? It's not a good thing that they that they have to come up, and it's not a good thing that guys are hurt. hurt but it is a good thing you're getting a chance. You know, it's a good thing that you're going to get the opportunity to come back to the big leagues and pitch and get an opportunity that maybe you might not have gotten until September because of the other guys help. Weeks throws out McHenry one out in the second and that'll bring up LeMay here. That ball was hit hard by Michael. Most starting pitchers utilized this year. We talked about it earlier. The Rockies with Friedrich going today have now used 11 different starters. That's more than anybody else in the game. The Rangers have used 10. The Marlins have used 10. 11 different starting pitchers. It's June 21st. DJ LeMayhew at the plate. And another chance for Weeks. This is an easier play. The Rockies have used 20 pitchers overall. When Wilton Lopez gets in a game, it'll be 21. Club record is 29, and that was three years ago. 2011, the Rockies had to use. 29. Actually, you know what? That would let me correct that. Wilton Lopez, I forgot, had pitched at the, at the start of this year, and that's when he was sent down. So that will not be 21. Well, you talked about the Marlins too. I mean, they just released Slowy, who was starting. They released uh, Randy Wolf, who was starting. They signed Brad Penny. He's going down to the minor leagues to get his arm in shape. But, uh, there's Wilton. Got on a flight out of Tacoma. That's a fair ball down the right field line for Friedrich. He'll have a base hit. Sinker that didn't sink. Hard swing, good things happen. So I always used to tell all the pitchers, swing hard, something good might happen. Well, something good happened. You got a two-out sinker. He just changed the, the official scoring, George. Last inning. Chris Davis on that ground ball to Rutledge. They're now going to give him a hit and an E5 as opposed to a straight E5, which won't work well for Christian Friedrich because that inning before the change in scoring, it was four runs, one earned. And now it'll go to uh, four runs, two earned. Ball and a strike on Blackman. He had a base hit and scored a run in the first. Charlie two for five yesterday. Strike zone, seeing a lot of pitches all over the all over that zone. Croy on the outside corner and the one two is stolen by Mark Reynolds. Good play by Reynolds. That would have been 
down the right field line as well. So the Rockies get a hit from Friedrich, nothing else. We'll go to the third, Milwaukee in front, four to two. Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the Ford Focus, Big MPGs, and Fun to Drive Ford. Go further. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. We go to the third inning, 4-2 to two, Milwaukee. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Mark Scott, from Coors Field on Saturday afternoon. Jonathan Lucroy, Carlos Gomez, and Aramis Ramirez. Christian Friedrich threw the ball a lot better than the line in that second inning, George. Oh, yeah, a lot better. He had a couple of plays at third base that didn't get uh, panned out. Uh, the double play didn't end the inning, so there were some things that happened there. The pitchers will tell you, I need to make a pitch to shut that inning down, and unfortunately, they got a couple of hits after uh, all the negativity that happened on the field. Lucroy popped the second, his first time up. 3 4 and 5 for Milwaukee. Curveball's high. Time for the Steel Tea Heating and Air Cool Stock. Never a trip charge for repair. That's a $69 value. Steel Tea. The T stands for trust. Go to SteelTea.com. Highest average by primarily a catcher since the end of the end of World War II. Joe Bowers on top. Piazza had a great year. He had many great years, but 97 he had 362 with the Dodgers. Joe Bauer on there twice. And Jonathan Lucroy. Began the day at 3:38. Got a 2-0 count, and that's in there two and one. I was visiting with Luke Roy about what he's done the last uh, couple of years offensively. He's really become one of the best two-way catchers in baseball. Last year he hit 280 with 18 home runs, drove in 82. This is fouled off. In 2012, he battled some injuries, but 96 games he hit 320 with 12 home runs. The year before, 265, 12 home runs, 59 RBIs. He said it was uh, late 2011 where he kind of figured out that he wasn't getting ready on time, getting the foot down. And ever since then, his offensive numbers have been outstanding. And that's why he hits in the three spot for Milwaukee. And it's a spot throughout his minor league career and his college days. That's where he hit. Comfortable at driving in runs. There's guys they put in RBI positions. There's a reason for that. Well, obviously, he puts the ball in play with a lot of base hits. Used to be that Ryan Braun would hit third. And, you know, the, the new three holes, the two spot. A lot of teams putting their top hitters, if not their top hitter, in the two spot. The Rockies. Took uh, Walt Weiss took last year's batting champion Michael Kadire and Cuddy 
was hitting second when he was healthy. Hanley Ramirez, who obviously is a big offensive threat, he hit 345 last year. Don Mattingly has he uh, has Matt has a uh, Hanley in the two spot. Look at uh, Cuddy on the bench. Ryan Braun's been an MVP, controversial figure. We understand, but. You know, he's a 300 hitter with with a lot of power. He's hitting the two spot now from a walk. This guy's an unusual commodity, George. Carlos Gomez, center fielder who can run and he hits for a lot of power. Well, it's for a lot of power, but his coverage in the outfield too. I mean, it's a gold glove caliber outfield that you know, he's able to cover. Very showmanship on the baseball field. Some people get rubbed the wrong way, some don't. He just swung and missed at that, and he slammed, looked at his bat, and he's pointing at it and talking to it. Like, how did you miss that? I put you in a position to succeed. This is in the air to shallow center, and Stubbs will get there. I'll bring up Aramis Ramirez with one out. Subaru brings you the manager's challenge each day. If there's a questionable call, instant replay, as you know, will be used. Brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Ron Renicky now in his fourth year as the skipper of the Brewers took over for Ken Maka. He's only challenged 10 times. I looked at that figure, George, today, and I said, wait a second. How can that be 70 plus games into the season only 10 challenges that did that seem like a low number yeah, it does to me who has the most I don't know that Doug do you know who has the most Doug will look well you up. brought up the least you got to know the most 255 out of 543 have been overturned so it's 47 percent so they're not as right as many everybody thinks they are well, based on 543 challenges, there's 30 teams. 600 would be 20 a team. So, you know, it's roughly 18 per team. And thus, Ron Renicky having challenged only 10 times, it is well below the norm. And they're 5-5 five and five on their challenges. 2-0 and oh on Ramirez. Bochi in that game in San Francisco. Didn't he get all 10 in in one game? He got a bunch. See, no question. Way. He had a lot of challenges that day. I was glad the, uh, for the most part, some of them went uh, the Rockies' way. Including the last one on Sunday. And that's a base hit for Ramirez. Boy, good hitter, isn't he? He's been a good hitter for a long time. Ball was up and away from him, and he just took it to the right side. 26 challenges, Cubs, most in the National League, most in all of baseball, actually. See, it pitches down, it's on the outer half of the plate, and he just takes it to the opposite field versus trying to do too much with it. This ball club's been very impressive for two days for me, and you know, at the start of the year, nobody thought this club would be anywhere in contention. Well, they I, all talked about the Cardinals, the Pirates, the Reds. That's going to be the big three in the, in the National League Central. Uh, and, they, and they've gotten good pitching, and, and they signed K-Rod late in camp, and he's been lights out 24 of 26 in, in saving games. Well, that's, been, that's been a huge boost. I, I talked to Lucroy about the expectations, and they're similar in that, you know, Milwaukee, Colorado, middle of the country, and in their division, all the storylines always – Travel first through St. Louis. Yep. And, and had for a and long they, time. And he felt like they could be really, really good. In fact, he told our Tracy Ringlesby in spring training. He said, "I think we're going to be outstanding." Because uh, nobody may be talking about us. He said, "I really like the moves we made on the hill, and offensively, we have a chance to be really special." And, and Luke Croy knew of what he spoke because right now at 45 and 30 they have the best record in the National League and they got out of the gate quickly. Well, Kyle Osh has been a big part of it. He's eight and two. He'll start Sunday against Colorado. Davis fouls off the one one. It's one and two. Davis hitting 377 against lefties. So far this year. 
Milwaukee second to the Rockies in batting average in the National League. Second in run scored to the Rockies in the National League. They hit a lot of doubles. They hit a lot of home runs. Pretty good team speed. ERA as a team is 364, which is kind of middle of the pack. Maybe the biggest difference is K Rod's throwing the ball like he did with the Angels. Yeah, he's throwing the ball very well. The velocity, I mean, it's still not 96. The ball should hang up for Stubbs. They're going to tag it second. They're not going to test it. Strong throw from Drew. He's not 96, but his control and command is just pinpoint. He's 92 to 93, and he's throwing the split for strikes. He threw it last night consistently for strikes on swing and misses on a couple of strikeouts last night. That split change is unhittable. But it's, but it's the presence on the mound that he brings. So Mark Reynolds will step up. Two outs and two on. Luke Roy at second. He walked. Ramirez at first. A single. 4-2 Milwaukee. He's a committed. I put three errors up on the board. So you know what I. I know what which one they changed. I, I think they said it wrong George. They changed. They take that double. Where's Dougie. They took that double from Gomez. Yeah that that's a straight E5. The one that you thought was an error George yeah, has been changed, changed to an error. Okay. I mean, I hate it for Rudd, but it is what, you know, oh, that's me, what it is. You know what? Let me change it. Now, oh, they're, now they're saying, now they're calling it a single. Now, you know what, Doug? You got to check that because there'd be five hits up there then. Wouldn't there be? Yeah, all, all, all you need to know is the Rockies have committed three errors. And they're losing 4-2. And they're losing 4-2. That's it's right. early. They'll figure it out later. Yeah. One ball, one strike, gone Reynolds. That's down the line, and it's a fair ball. Reynolds didn't realize it at first. One run is scored, and Ramirez stops at third. Usually the hitter knows it better than anybody. And he thought it had too much fade on it, but it was fair by a decent margin, and it's now 5-2. to two. Right, right out of the hand of Christian Friedrich. Another good pitch fastball down very low in the zone. I mean these guys are swinging at everything. They must be seeing it pretty good out of the hand because that ball stayed straight typically off a right handed bat. It's going to fade to the right about eight to ten feet even on power hitters. That ball straightened out. Rockies will walk Segura with first base open it. Go to Willie Peralta the pitcher. This thing's got the feel of last night all over again, huh? Yeah, not, uh, not liking what's going on here now. Get in out and get out of this thing. Follow the every Rockies game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get instant replay score stats, audio, and a whole lot more. So did you ever figure out who they gave the air to? The third error. Doug's working on. What do you got, Dougie? So Gomez, uh, Gomez's ball up the line, the, the do or die. Yeah. They're gonna give him a single, and then an error, I guess, for letting the ball go under his glove. So I guess they figured even if he fields it, he's gonna beat it, but. That it went under his glove and Gomez ended up in second. So it's an error there. And then Chris Davis's, instead of a base hit, is an E5 the whole way. And 
then of course there was the E4 on Peralta's fielder's choice. So there ends up being three errors in that inning. One and zero on Peralta right now at the bases loaded. Cut by Peralta. Here's the one, two. And that goes to the backstop. Cross. That's going to cost the Rockies a run. And then it gets thrown away. It's going to cost them potentially another run. Oh, my goodness. That's ugly. And now another runner coming home oh, safe. Rockies fell asleep on that one. And the trail runner, Segura, takes advantage. Ugliness and embarrassment. All wound into one play. That, that looked like a bunch of eight-year-olds. Troy Tulowitzki hands on hips. Now has the baseball from the umpire. You had a wild pitch. Then you had an error on McHenry's toss. And then just a nap. As, as Christian Friedrich was kind of walking with the baseball and Segura saw an opening. There was no one at home plate. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this at the big league level. Well, I thought it was a mix up crisscross looking for a breaking ball, and then he got this. One run scored, the overthrow by McHenry. That run scored, and Friedrich's kind of walking back. This was all Segura. Nobody else was around with it. McHenry was looking down. Christian couldn't throw the baseball. I think McHenry's having a tough time getting his breath. Now he's going to stay in the ball game. Eight to two, Milwaukee. Four errors for the Rockies. A wild pitch and uh, the error on McHenry, and then mental errors. Who's cascading down as the Rockies trail it by six runs in the middle of the third.
for runs. The Rockies have committed four errors. And I, honestly, folks, I've never seen anything like this in the big leagues. It may have been a cross-up. So you get the wild pitch. McHenry tries to flip it. No, we've seen that before. Tries to flip it to Friedrich. It gets away. And now Friedrich just watching. And watch McHenry. He, he hurt his back and his head's down. Segura sees that. And so Friedrich can't throw it to McHenry and has to just try to race Segura to the plate. And this may be where McHenry, I'm, I'm sure it is, where he, where he tweaked the back. And I'm guessing it. The only reason is we had a shot of him putting his hand on his lower back. So three runs scored on what was first a wild pitch. And then the error on McHenry. And the Rockies, it was a 5-2 game. You have Peralta, the pitcher up there, who ultimately strikes out. That, that is as ugly as you will see at the big league level. Now the Rockies, the good news is they swung the bats last night. and They have a whole lot of time to swing it here. This is bounced to short. And Drew Stubbs out by half a step. Four runs in that inning. And there was two hits. Lewitsky hit a little flare to second in the first inning. Two men aboard. Rockies got the first two runs of the game. A four spot in the second, a four spot in the third for Milwaukee. And right now, I have eight runs for the Brewers, of which only three are earned. Maybe with the change in the first inning or the second inning, okay, it's four earned. So eight over four. Ball and a strike. Home plate umpires Adam Hamari. Had not ID'd him yet. Mike yeah. DeMuro is at first. Mike Estabrook at second. Jerry Lane's at third. Two and one. Now here. The official score <laughs> at Coors Field, Dave Einspar, who's done it for a long time, has said on the in-house PA system that, that it's four earned runs Major League Baseball and you know, they keep a book also has three runs I I have it as three unless they've changed something now that we're unaware of And Troy drives it to left field. The 3-1 pitch is driven for a single. With one out, that'll bring up Justin Morneau. Said what you it many times, you just got to chip away now. Yeah, yeah, you do. I mean, when you have an inning like that and you're down 8-2, to two, you just keep chipping away, chipping away. You don't worry about it. Just keep playing baseball. You get one or two here and keep adding to it. Sure, why uh, Jerry Nairn's given a lot of signs to Lucroy with a six run lead. High fly ball to left field. Davis out there. By the way, we got an email last week, and Dolores is turning 30 today. Is that okay if I say that? Huh. Here, I'm going to bring your mic down for you right here. And, and we're so happy to have you in the booth, and I wanted to share it at home with everybody. And Drew and I, we're just glad you're here. And Charmaine sent us an I email. I'm so happy, happy to meet birthday. you, too. How oh, are you? thank you. I love the bantering that goes back and forth. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> we're like brothers. And, we've been, you, you know, do. been together for a long time. And so. you come across as being so wonderful. You really. Well, I'm not, but thank you. <laughs> just teasing. That is I'm very teasing. nice of you. How are you? 
I am fine. I'm an well? old baseball fan from uh, New York. Is that right? Uh, we were uh, Giant fans, and they played in the Polo Grounds. Yes. And we hated the Dodgers, and they were from Ebbets Field. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, and they were better than we were. Well, a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. My, That's my right. father grew up going to games. Uh, he, he walked across the bridge from the Bronx, was not a Yankees fan, was a big Giant fan, worked yeah. in the Polo Grounds. So you guys, your paths probably crossed at some yeah, point. Yeah, probably. I'm you sure. were yelling popcorn and peanuts at him. He didn't even know it, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> This is sharply hit. Ramirez can't find it. No play. That should be a base hit. Corey Dickerson stay hot. And it was a shot right at Ramirez. He's able to pick that thing off and try to do something with it here. And uh, just off of the glove, not able to complete it. And a base hit for Dickerson. Where are you going? Well, all right. Happy birthday, huh? Hold on just a minute. Turn around. She's got to get a picture, Drew. The game will go on. Don't worry about it. Absolutely. Here, just turn around. We're going to turn around right. You got your camera with you? You got a camera with you? Oh, you do. Here, turn around. We're going to face your daughter. Let's turn this way. Here, you come right here in between us. We'll watch the game for a second. Here, you turn Rutledge around this way. at the plate. Well, there we go. Happy birthday, Dwarf. Thanks for coming by. Come see us more often. I'd love to have you. Doug loves it, too. You know, Doug's got a new baby girl. 1-0 on the run. You're very welcome. Great to see you. Have a wonderful day. What a delight. She's been following baseball for a few years. Two on with two outs. See if Rudd can come through here. And a ground ball deep in the hole. Long throw Segura. And he just did get Rutledge. So the Rockies get a couple of hits. Nothing else across. Eight to two. Milwaukee. Uh, have you tweet us your Rockies fan photos right now? It's a good time to do it. Use the hashtag CO fan photo for a chance to have it shown during an upcoming broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Well, that ball hit by Dickerson last inning has been scored an error, not what? a base hit. I thought I thought that he'd get wow. a hit. I mean, it was a tough chance. That. Smoked it. Aramis Ramirez and just kind of knocked it down. Dickerson runs well. And as of right now, it's it's an error, not a hit. Yeah, he's I assumed that it was a hit. He's been a busy man down there at the scorer's table today. Yep, Ricky Weeks will lead things off. Easy to criticize when you're not the one doing it, huh, Dougie? <laughs> Would you ever do that, Doug? Official score? Nah, you wouldn't.
Well, tough as a pitcher to go out, gather your thoughts, get back squared up. And I mean, yesterday in that ball game, it was amazing because you looked out and uh, Estrada started the ball game. And after two innings, the Rockies uh, were leading in that ball game, six to four. He ended up going five and a third, giving up seven runs, and he got the win in the game. So there, where there's a will, there's a way. You just keep pushing. It's all you can do. Two and one on weeks. Strikeout and a triple, and now ground ball to second. DJ throws him out. That'll bring up Ryan Braun. June 25th is sust sustainability in the stadium day. Join the Rockies and plastics make it possible. And our effort to raise awareness for recycling plastics and reducing waste at Coors Field. Fans who recycle plastic at the custom recycling machine will receive a special t shirt offer. Braun, a fly ball to left and a strikeout. That's such a weird line score, George. You look up there on the big board, eight runs, five hits for Milwaukee. You don't normally associate eight runs with just five hits, and then you look at the errors column for the Rockies, and there's a big, ugly four. Yeah, that's the difference in the game, no question. But as we discussed another uh, when the Rockies came to the plate got a couple of hits you just keep pecking away pecking away you get a run here run there and try to get it close towards the end and try to steal one away from. Them. Oh two. Braun hitting just 195 in the month of June 327 coming into the month. Brewers will return home after the ball game tomorrow. They've been on the road for 15 of the last 18, but as we remarked, they've been a great road team. 10 games over 500 on the road. One of a handful of teams that is playing winning baseball on the road and at home. If you're wondering at home, and Drew talks about this, here's a group of. of Teams that that are winning both in their home yards and away from home. Well, they've all got something in common: Milwaukee, Kansas City, Oakland, San Francisco, all in first place. Toronto, first place. Yankees, Atlanta, playing well. Line drive to right, and Blackman will have to field it on a hop. So it's a one-out single for Braun. By the way, the most errors committed in a game by a Rockies ball club came in '96 against Houston. It was six. In a game, they lost that game 16 to 8. 22nd time the Rockies have committed four errors or more in a ball game. Their record over that span is 3 and 18. Well, basically, it happens once a year. This is the 22nd year of Rockies baseball, and you said it's happened 22 times. Good block by McHenry. No advancement of the runner. I'm kind of surprised Braun didn't try to move up. Ball in the dirt. A guy who runs well. Yeah, but look where the ball came to. It bounced right back out in front. Short curve ball here. Lucky he cut it off the chest. And then from a runner's perspective, you don't really see the ball because you have the runner moving around and the catcher moving. Guess what, George? 
No, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. Dickerson, as it should have been, has now been awarded a hit. So take away that error. Right field, fairly deep, but Charlie's got to play. And Lucroy's retired. Two outs. That'll bring up Carlos Gomez. And you know the good thing, George, for my book? I yeah. put it as a single right away, and I never had changed it. Well, and I did also. Here it is. Sliced very hard. One hop right at it. It's not, it's not even it's off to his left, and he's trying to pick it. That's a, come on, man. That's a hit all the way. That's a tough play. Really tough play. This is in the air, left center field. Stubbs, Cruz, has got it, and that's all in the fourth inning for Milwaukee. 8 2, they lead. Here's our first bank game recap. First bank, the home of free checking, is proud to support the home team. Sign up at efirstbank.com. The uh, Rockies played an ugly game defensively. They've kicked it four times. Milwaukee has taken advantage. They have eight runs. Justin Morneau got the Rockies off on the right foot, a two run single in the first. Carlos Gomez has a 17 game hitting streak. And Mike McHenry will lead it off here in the fourth inning against Willie Peralta. Mike hit the ball hard, but right at the second baseman, Ricky Weeks, his first time up. And this is popped up, foul ground near the dugout. Lucroy will not have a play. He landed actually in the Rockies dugout. Henry did a good job on that road trip, George. Hit the ball hard. Caught the youngsters. Yeah. In fact, he's had a hit nine of his 11 starts. It's coming back to the big leagues. Five for 18. A couple of RBIs and a double on that road trip, covering three ball games. Last year with Pittsburgh, just 41 games, suffered a Season ending knee injury last year. One and two, strike three. Got the outside corner. And that is the second strikeout for Peralta. He also got Dickerson looking in the first. 91 inning, 69 strikeouts. Likes a lot of ground ball outs. Threw a pretty good slider right here. 
been able to get the strike out and from the overhead appears to be off the plate didn't really appear to get the strike zone but given to him by Amari the home plate umpire who's out of the International League working on a little vacation time now I saw something the other day is there 12 new vacation umpires there's there's a bunch a lot of new names this year guys getting their opportunity well they've had to increase the workforce in uh, New York on the instant replay with umpires so those guys were winding through New York or work a day or, or work a series in the Manhattan offices in the replay studio this is a big chopper to Ramirez and he throws out the May here two got nobody on Friedrich will come up Christian had a base hit to right in the second inning auto glass issues trust safe flight online safe flight.com phone number 303-287-5000 The other thing Lucroy does, he gives himself a very, very small target, moves side to side. So as a pitcher, your focus is uh, always down in the strike zone, kind of sets back there on his haunches. Does the best he can to try to receive the ball within the strike zone. Three and zero on Friedrich. We're all to 52 pitches, 31 strikes, uh, 21 balls. Christian, a Chicago area kid. Takes another strike. Let's move back to the Chicago area after spending uh, a few of his off seasons. In Miami, or not in Miami, in Florida, I should say. This has a chance to be a leg hit out at first base. Segura shot in front of Ricky Weeks and threw out Friedrich by a stride. One, two, three inning. That's the first of the game for Willie Peralta. Eight, two, as we go to the fifth. For the fifth Wells Fargo customers, get your two for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies, Wells Fargo Bank, member FDIC. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, and Mark Stout, Ramirez, Davis, Reynolds against Christian Friedrich in the fifth. Good start for the Rockies. They got two in the first inning against Willie Peralta. For Peralta, he must have been saying, oh no, here we go again, because last July when he was here, the Rockies beat him up. But then the Rockies. 
trouble making defensive plays. And the Brewers have put eight on the board, of which only three have been earned. And that's why you see Friedrich still on the mound. 77 pitch, pitches into this ball game. He's into the fifth inning of work. And, you know, if he can go, he's going to go. He had a clean inning in the first, a fairly good inning back in the fourth inning, where he, uh, this previous inning, he gave up a single to Braun and unable to get out of that without any damage. He'll get Ramirez, Davis, and Reynolds. Fly ball to right, and a base hit and a run scored for soon to be 36 year old Aramis Ramirez. And nice curveball dropped in there by Christian. 0 and 1. Ball one strike. It's our Toyota talk in it. Why is Cuddy in uniform in the dugout when there's no way he's going to play? He's part of the team. Even exactly. though he is injured on a disabled list, he brings a lot of knowledge, enthusiasm, positive thoughts. The whole day all the way through. This ball's hit deep to center field. Stubbs on the run. Not gonna get there. The Bucks are gonna get this one. And for Aramis Ramirez, his ninth home run of the year, and it's nine to two. Take a look at this pitch. Fastball pretty much elevated about bell tie, and he uh, turned on it to dead center field, just going to clear the fence and end up out into the center field pond. And that misses on Chris Davis. Home run number 363 for Ramirez, which is 79th all time. He, re not. he recently passed a, a guy by the name of Joe DiMaggio. Pretty good player, I heard. He's seventh all time among third basemen in home runs. Rutledge throws out Chris Davis. Mark Reynolds is coming up. Let's get another question. When is Nolan expected to be back in action? Well, he's got to get cleared first that the bone is healed. It's 85% healed now, reported yesterday. He has been on the field every day taking ground balls lightly thrown by Scotty Mariama, but he is working on his side to side, doing an awful lot of running, stretching, throwing the baseball. Uh, he is staying busy. This is to deep left, but it's going to stay in the ballpark. Yeah, he's in great shape, and he's been able, as we've said all along, to keep the arm in shape because it's his left hand. So when he goes and plays catch, Keith Duggar typically, or Scotty Garrett, will catch for him, and yet he can throw and long toss and everything. They just hand him the baseball when it, when it gets returned. And when the bone is completely healed, he'll start by strengthening the hand and then dry swings and then T work and then eventually graduate to, to BP and then ultimately he'll go out. So you're still talking about probably a couple of weeks. And yeah, the fear factor is obviously go right now. The vibration is swinging on a jam pitch. You end up uh, doing more damage to the finger. You can see that he still has it uh, covered up so it doesn't get hit. You know, there's a lot of things accidentally that can happen in a dugout. And all of a sudden, somebody hit against it accidentally, and he got it uh, broke again. Well, other than the home run, you get a couple of pop flies. Friedrich threw five now. The Rockies trail it in this game, nine to two.
Yankees with some work to do as they trail 9-2, top of the order up. That means Justin Morneau will hit fourth. Morneau has been the top run producing guy for the Rockies thus far. He came into today with 49 RBIs. He's added two. I wanted to wonder where that stood in terms of his career. You got to go back four other seasons where he's had 50 or more RBIs to this point, the first day of summer. 57 three times in 56. But as I said, he's added two now, 51. He is having a great year. By the way, guys, today, the induction ceremony in the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in St. Mary's, Ontario. Tim Wallach getting inducted, the former Expo great, and three others. That's happening today. Yeah, that's, uh, that is really good. Timmy, very well deserved going into the Baseball Hall of Fame there in Canada. What a great player. Absolutely. Blackman, one for two. See if the Rockies get that offense jump started. The race to the bag is Mark Reynolds. It's five straight now, retired by Willie Peralta. Got the heavy sinker work. Talking to some people in the Brewers organization, they believe Peralta would be their their lead dog, if you will, out of their rotation right now. Yeah, if, maybe. I mean, Los eight two for me. Is, uh, the guy knows how to pitch. We'll find out tomorrow how he handles Coors Field. The, this is not a strategy session. This is giving Peralta a chance to rest at altitude because he had to sprint over to first base. That's all Lucroy's doing. Drew Stubbs reached on an error, stole a base, and scored in the first inning. Also, ground ball to short. Giovanni Gallardo's been okay. He's not the dominant guy he was a couple of years ago. Down low, two and one. Rockies have lost four straight after putting together a five game winning streak that included that sweep in San Francisco. Now the Giants have fallen on real hard times. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were running away with it, no question about it. And then all of a sudden they hit the roadblock with the Nats, lose three out of four. The Rockies sweep them, and they haven't played too much after that. Well, tomorrow, I want everybody to get to the ballpark early as the first 15,000 are going to receive a two-little bobblehead numb courtesy of Frontier Airlines. Arrive early. Gates will open at 2 o'clock prior to the ball game, and there he is. How about it? You like that? Don't touch it. Not going to. Drew's like a little kid on Christmas. You give him a all the toys, he breaks them. So we don't let him touch these bobbleheads. He doesn't understand why this springs and bounces, so he, like, tears it off to look see how it all works. Okay. That's me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here you go, Dougie. And Troy takes a strike. He had a sharp single to left his last time up. He's one for two. Got a career average of 414 against the Milwaukee Brewers. And he takes another strike. Both sides of the plate asking uh, a lot of times see a glove pancake they're wanting to break a ball and that's what he got down in the dirt put it right where LaCroix wanted it. So LaCroix asked for it and he received it. One two. Fastball and it's pounded into the ground to short. Segura and the stretch by Reynolds gets to Lewinsky. That's seven in a row now. Retired by Willie Peralta. We'll go to the sixth inning. It's eight to, excuse me, nine to two, Milwaukee.
to hit him seven to five. The big number four errors in the ball game. One of the uh, tip of the cap. I'm gonna tip it, and you're gonna go, you're nuts. Friedrich's pitching. It's the sixth inning. We would have thought that after all the trouble he'd had in the middle, his bullpen's gonna give him a pat on the back. 87 pitches thrown so far. Nine runs, four earned runs, a couple of walks, and three strikeouts through five. Well, this last week, which has been a tough one for the Rockies, I'll show you a graphic in a moment. The, the bullpen has worked more innings than the starters, and that's not how it's supposed to work. Willie Peralta backs out of there, and the pitch misses. The starters have worked just 28 and a third coming into today, and they have an ERA close to nine. The relievers have worked three plus more innings, and you know their ERA is not great, but it's obviously better than the rotation. They're at 483. It sounds like a broken record. Uh, I was at Jacob, or, or I was at my uh, 13, my 14-year-old game this morning, and it doesn't matter what level you play at. It all begins right there on the hill. And the Rockies have not pitched well the last week, and with all the injuries. They now have the highest ERA in baseball and a walk on four pitches to Willie Peralta to begin the sixth inning. I just want to see where a lot of those pitches, one strike was at the top of the zone, the others uh, off the plate, but not by much. Most pitches thrown by Friedrich this year has been uh, 103 in a ball game versus New Orleans. He went six innings in that game. Appears Nick Massett uh, is warming up down in the bullpen for the Rockies. Yeah, and Nick is eligible to return today. He was suspended for three days for hitting Evan Gaddis a week ago. Rockies again made a multitude of moves at the start of play today. One, they had to bring Christian Friedrich up. Show you those moves here in a moment. Here's the 01 on week, should be two. Troy's gonna take it himself, and it's a double play, 6 3. Here are the moves earlier today. Chris Martin was optioned out, as was Kyle Parker, so the Rockies are short uh, a position player on the bench. Michael Kadir to make room on the 40 man was transferred. To the 60 day disabled list. Wilt Lopez, who was designated for assignment about uh, 10 days ago or so, has pitched better down in AAA. He was brought up to add an arm to that bullpen. So Friedrich up, Friedrich up, Lopez up, Martin out, Parker out. Ryan Braun with two outs and nobody on. On the ground to third, Rutledge holds on and will throw to first, just did get brought. Turns into a 1 2 3 inning for Friedrich and a low pitch in it. 9 2 Brewers.
Morning. Hey, thanks for tweeting us uh, your questions at Daring Toyota Talk. For more answers to your questions, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash RM, where our game analyst will answer more bonus questions uh, before the game ends. So make sure you do that. We appreciate everyone taking their busy time out. And uh, Friedrich's day is over, folks. And uh, it's not going to end up being a pretty one, but he did give you six innings. And, and out of those nine runs, I think four earned. Is that right, Drew? Uh, well, Major yeah. League Baseball has four. I'm going with that number. Okay. And seven innings, seven, six yeah. innings, seven hits, nine runs, four earned, three walks, three strikeouts, 92 pitches on the day. Um, we're waiting to see the final on this, but I know it's tough to say tip your cap to a guy that went to six innings, gave up nine runs, but only four of those earned. Willie Peralta has got five innings. He's allowed two runs on five hits. The Brewers have made one error behind him. Morno, Dickerson, Rutledge. Two run single for Justin back at the first inning. And a fly ball to fairly deep left field. I hope he gets an opportunity to go back to where he became a star, Minneapolis, and participate in the All Star game in a few weeks, George. He deserves to be there. He does deserve to be there, along with Troy Tulowitzki. And there was guys prior to the injuries. Obviously, could uh, Arenado belong there? It's just been a bad situation for the entry front, but this guy has put on a show uh, offensively. 51 RBIs, 12 home runs, 299. Everybody be pretty happy in uh, Colorado. You, if you double things up, you know, all of a sudden end up with 24 to 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, huh? 300 average. Kid me. He's been terrific. 3 1, and this is. Going to be a uh, they say it, well Ramirez right. tried to cut in front of Segura and it's, you know normal operating procedure is all you can get on the left side all you can get to I should say and that will be an infield hit for Justin Morneau. Well, Segura's made nice plays all day long and probably going to make this one too. As he tried to Ramirez tried to get to that thing you see Segura was planted on the baseball right behind him. You never fault effort or hustle. Corey Dickerson, one for two. Whoa, in tight. Bordeaux with that, uh, with the two hits today, is at 457 over his last 10 games, and he's driven in 17. Is that any good? That's pretty good. Is that all star worthy? That's all star worthy. You better believe it. Lead the club with 51 ribbies. Just Dickerson was called out on strikes in the first inning on a similar pitch outside corner breaking ball. Ball's pretty well hit to left. Davis going back, still going back. Get up, get out of here. In the first row, Corey Dickerson back to back nights with a jack. Last night it was to right. Tonight it's to left. His 10th home run of the year. And he's got RBI's 28 29, and it's 9 to 4. Yeah, I want to look at the pitch too, because I thought it was a fastball away and it stayed up a little bit. That's a breaking ball. You see that curveball come off. Dickerson really stayed on this pitch. I thought the other one, just like this, was called a strike. He was struck out on it earlier on a called third strike. He stayed on this and gave a happy fan a souvenir to cut the lead back to nine to four now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Okay, he swings so hard and hits the ball so solid that he's going to have an opportunity to hit a lot of home runs. I don't care if it was a wall scraper, it's out. 
Deep short. Segura is going to get Rutledge again on a same pretty same close play. play. Yeah. Same exact spot, same exact play. Now, Rutt uh, and Ann played against each other when the Texas League a couple of years ago. Dickerson's hit a home run every 14.3 at bats this year. Pretty special. McHenry ground ball to second, sharply hit. He was caught looking. Well, Peralta's not tired. 98 on that last fastball. 77 pitches thrown in the game as he works here in the sixth. And another play for Segura deep in the hole. And another strong really? throw. He's been tested today, I think. Yes, he has. He's passed all the tests. Now, Justin Morneau, talking about his candidacy to be an all star, he's among the top 15 hitters in the National League, hitting about 303 after that last knock. He's third in RBIs with the two ribbies today. He's played tremendous defense. He's a good first baseman, obviously. Just in the National League West, you have Adrian Gonzalez in L.A. And he's hit for a much higher average than Adrian has. It's a diving play by Reynolds. Good feed to Peralta. And he gets LeMahieu to end the inning. And, of course, you have Paul Goldschmidt in Arizona. But Moreno ought to be in the All-Star game. And maybe All-Star games in the future for Corey Dickerson, the way he swings it. Now nine to four, the Brewers lead on this, the official first day of summer. So Drew and George, I'm going to shake it up. The official summer baseball team. We got old timers, we got players playing today. In the outfield, you got to have a pool and a lake in the summer, and you got to have a strawberry. So why not Daryl Strawberry, right? Let's go to the infield. Sunny Jim Bottomley, first base. Red Shandy's at second. You garden in the summer, right? So. We'll have Ron Garden hired short. Solarte's on the Yankees now, so solar. Jim Sunburn, sounds like sunburn enough. So my pitchers are Catfish Hunter, Louisiana Lightning, Guidry, and we'll close it with, what do you do? You grill in the summer. So Jason Grilly, even though he's not closing anymore for the Pirates. So. Hey, Mark, I want to ask you. If you guys want to think of some other names, feel free to throw well, some Well, I got something I want to ask you. I'm listening, George. Why is today the first day of summer? It's the uh, summer solstice. Summer solstice. It was early today, I think, uh, Four something in the morning. See, time. there you go. It's the axis, the moon, the earth, the you know the revolving. I'm just testing you. We learned that a long time. I like ago. that lineup, Mark. Do you? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's lineup. some hard work. Good research. Appreciate it. 
Uh, you know, you just fans at home do too. Type a few words in there. Fans, there's a, that's a summer thing. <laughs> right? Jonathan Lucroy pops it to shallow center. Stubbs with the long strides will make the catch. One out. Lucroy retired. That'll bring up Carlos Gomez. Now there's Massett's numbers on the year. 21st appearance for him. We got a run average right at four. That'll drop with the one out in center field. He's pitched 18 innings, 18 hits, 16 strikeouts. A nice addition to have this veteran down in the bullpen. Gomez with the base hit his first time up and two fly balls to center. He's now hit in 17 straight. He's reached 34 straight. That 17 game hitting streak is a career high for Gomez. Gomez back in 2008 prize prospect of the New York Mets was sent to Minnesota along with Philip Umber and two other pitchers for Johan Santana remember that oh yeah and that's going to be a hit for Gomez off of Bassett redirected toward Tulowitzki. Now most pitchers do fall off first base side. Very few uh, come right at the plate. That ball is hit hard right back at him. Ricochet to Tudor going to barehand the ball. You see it on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo. Massa tried to get the glove down. And the glove, uh, the ball just shot off towards Tudor Whiskey. And he was going to try to barehand it, but it's going to be a difficult play. Gomez runs well. And now Massa has to be wary of Gomez. With 11 stolen bases at first. Nice. Five run lead, Ramirez at the plate. And they, after last night's ball game, that's not going to slow things down, trust you. I mean, they're going to go and get after. They're going to continue to play their brand of baseball if they can steal a base. Delivered in the strike zone at 90. One strike on Ramirez. He had a home run to dead center field this last time up. Couple hits, couple runs scored for Ramirez. He has 363 career home runs. Is six seasons of at least a hundred RBIs. And that's going to be a base hit right center field. Gomez will go first and third. So runners on the corners with one out. Three hits for Ramirez, and that is hit number nine. For Milwaukee, they had a season high matching 19 yesterday en route to producing a season best 13 runs. Smells like pizza in our booth because Frazier just ordered some. And you can do the same thing the day after every Rockies victory, get 40% off your online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Go online and do that. 40% yeah. off. See that? 40 percent off. That's huge. Great deal. It's a wonderful deal. Chris Davis at the plate. His last 11. He's driven in 10 with three home runs. Got a lot of pop. Bales a little bit on a swing. It reminds you of Juan Arebe, who 
you know LA's playing good baseball they got beat last night by San Diego late. Kenley Jansen wasn't able to save it but they're going to get rebate back soon he's going out on a rehab assignment. Rancho Cucamondo he's going to go down to high A which is close to LA and playing a couple of ball games down there. See that first moves in the bucket for Davis. He's still got a lot of good plate coverage. He's got opposite field power. Chris Davis, a product of a school that's turned out a lot of big leaguers, George. Cal State Fullerton. There's been a few there, hasn't there? Yeah. His dad, he's a he's from a baseball family. Chris's dad, Rodney, played pro ball and then uh, became a scout with the Diamondbacks. Sixty one different Titans have played in the big leagues. Old friend of yours, Phil Nevin. Yep, there's going to be a Nevin uh, AAA manager right now. He's doing well, too. He was with Detroit for a long time and it let go last year. I think he's with uh, San Francisco. Double check that. And he went. Davis got good pitch by Massive. Two outs. Threw the fastball in, so as soon as he threw that, made him aware of the heat in. It allowed him to go out with the knuckle curve, and he got him to check swing on a ball down in a kind of an unhittable zone. Good for Nick Massett and the Rockies. All that on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl camera. Mark Reynolds, a single and a double, and a fly ball to left field. Mark Reynolds is a 21st century Milwaukee version of Rob Deer, and that got away from Nick Massett. Curveball, and it, it got Reynolds. That hit him in the helmet or the top of the shoulder. You know, another look at it. That happens here. A lot of times, the ball will fly right out of your hand, and it is the curveball, and it just uh, got way up in it. Couldn't be able to do anything about it. You know, Masson will try to work against Segura, who has been hot in this series. We talked about a couple of home runs last night. When a ball slips like that out of your hand and you catch a guy, you don't go away from it. You continue to throw your out pitches to get through this inning. Bases loaded, two outs. Gene Segura takes a strike. At 92 from Nick. Rockies normally own the Brewers here, George. They're they played really well against yeah, 40 and 19 at Coors Field. Brewers have the worst record at Coors Field of any park they go to. Segura looking for his first hit with the bases loaded. They've hit 290 as a club. You know, it's interesting, Drew, too, because the Rockies have played really well against them in the last two years. You know, yeah. A couple of years in a row, they opened up in Milwaukee. They won two out of three both years. And that's caught. Nice job by Blackman. Segura throws his helmet. He hit that well, but it stayed up in the air, fortunately. And Charlie closed and made the catch. No harm done. Bases left loaded. Nine to four Brewers.
Let's take a look at our Cooney Lexus look back. Well, this is a, a play I've never seen before in the big leagues and hope to never see again. Bases were loaded, wild pitch, overthrow, and then McHenry has his head down because he got hurt a little bit, and Segura comes home. Three runs scored on a wild pitch and an error. Eight runs in all, the second and third. Offensively, the Rockies had a two-run hit from Morneau and a two-run home run from Dickerson. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, that's our look back brought to you by Cooney Lexus, where Luxury has a new address, open in Greenwood Village and Colorado Springs. Ryan Wheeler is going to pinch hit for Nick Bassett, 9-1-2. Willie Peralta is still out there. He's throwing 89 pitches. Inside ball one. And Ryan bounces one to Reynolds, former third baseman, playing on the other corner. Makes the play. Celebrate Independence Day with the Rockies after the Rockies Dodger game, July 4th, day for the best fireworks show in town. I'm going to correct that. It's the best fireworks show in baseball. Courtesy all of Coca Cola and King Supers, tickets are going quickly. Get yours today. Look at that, Drew. See how they do the fireworks with Rude? Isn't that cool? I still and haven't figured out how they do that. Well, it's expensive. That is a great fireworks show. A renowned fireworks show put on here at Coors Field by the Rockies each year. 9 4. And Charlie Blackman with one out. Charlie, a base hit and a run scored in the first couple ground balls to Mark Reynolds since. Tell you what, Peralta George throws hard, 95 plus, and we've seen a lot of chopped balls, which is indicative of a power sinker. Yeah, but chewing up a lot, an awful lot of bats too. There may not be breaking in half, but you're seeing some crack bats today, hitting it off the end of the bat on the shit, right up against the the labels. Not the same guy we've watched in the past, that's for sure. Drew Stubbs swings at a breaking ball, and it's 0-1. Drew reached on an error in the first inning. He's 0 for 3 officially. Had a stolen base and a run scored. Another slider. That's off the plate. One and one. Two one and a broken bat one hopper to Weeks and Peralta works a one two three seventh inning took him just nine pitches nine four Brewers as we go to the eighth.
top of the eighth inning. Here's our AT&T fan photo of the game. And uh, you know what the caption was? Met my hero. Who's that on the bottom of the picture? It looks like Alana. Messing with you. I'm messing with you. I just threw that out there. Doug just Jenny, smacked me. Jenny Everybody's had, throwing everything Jenny has, at me. Jenny has so many fans. She it's does, just, doesn't she? Yeah. And she ought to, because Jenny's the best. I had to give him a little tweet bit your, of a hard time there. Tweet your photo <laughs> to hashtag CO fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Jenny's not going to talk to you. So. That's okay. She knows I'm joking around. Matt Belisle's now in there. Peralta hitting for himself here in the eighth. Going and back out, I'm sure. 0-2. Yeah, Belisle making his 358th appearance. Third most in the history of the Rockies. Steve Reed, 461. Fuentes, 428. Muscanic. Corpus. Man, he's still pitching in the Rockies organization. I'm sure he was a candidate along with uh, Lopez to come back to the big leagues when the Rockies made a couple moves earlier today that we told you about. This is on the ground to short. Troy Tulowitzki is good fielding. Now Peralta just 89 pitches through seven. He's gone deeper into ball games this year than ever before. The most thrown 110. He's been over 100 over six times. So it's one out. Ricky Weeks will come up. Ricky a triple and a run scored. Or excuse me, a triple and an RBI back in the second inning. He's one for four. Ricky's a guy, George, that's hit a bunch of home runs. Never hit for a big average. Last year of a long-term contract. Scooter Gannett just played his way up to the big leagues and he swung the bat well. So Ricky getting a start against the left hander today, now getting to face Matt Belisle. Ball on a strike on Weeks. Pros pro, Matt Belisle. Speaking of pros, pros, uh, you know what? Uh, Visiting with before the game and a very close friend of Matt Belisle and his throwing partner for so many years. Raphael Betancourt, nine months removed from Tommy John surgery, throwing flat ground bullpen. He's going to throw uh, through to hitters actually the other day, just fastball changeup. But uh, he's working diligently, hoping to get back. I yeah, watched him Later throw in that. Year. Uh, got here early at the ballpark yesterday to watch him throw to some hitters. Threw the ball very well. Threw strikes. Delivery looked good. Arm looked good. Hey, if you're looking for a great deal and you want to help out the environment, purchase a green pack. Available June 22nd, 23rd. You get two tickets with $5 going toward the game of Green Initiative. Ryan Braun, one for four. He had six at bats last night. Went three for six. Inside ball one. Good heater at 94. Now, Matt threw an inning yesterday. It was uh, pretty upset with himself. He gave up that run and got through the inning. Starting to see more of the 93 to 95 out of Matt Belisle on a more consistent basis. As he likes to say, I'm letting it eat. I'm just letting it fire. On the ground foul. You know what that last pitch was? Not the one that was fouled off. That ball he threw by him towards. That was a Bruce Springsteen ball. Bruce Springsteen fastball. He threw that speed ball right by him. Here's something. We're talking about the dugout today with Walt. Is that it? I said, why? I see because I love Springsteen. Walt. The door springs. Right. So the the lyric, why is it he threw that he throw that speed ball right by you as opposed to why did he just say fastball? You have no response for him. I don't. 
Speedball. Speedball. Who was it forever that was trying to meet Springsteen? Oh, it was Mike Kelling, our former producer. Went everywhere. He's probably seen him at concert like 200 times. He's seen him a bunch. Mike has and, seen him And he a was bunch. trying to meet him. I want to meet him. I want to meet him. And he got backstage. Joe Buck, the longtime announcer with Fox. Um, big shot with Fox. Got him backstage. And uh, Mike had this album. He was going to get signed. You know, and Joe Buck had told him, hey, I'm going to take care of you on this. I'm going to get it done for you. So here comes spring team down now. The one. Hey, Joe, how you doing? They want to be a friend of mine. Mike Kelly couldn't talk, couldn't shake his hand, couldn't do nothing. Oh, my God, it's Springsteen. He couldn't, forgot to get the album signed, got everything done. He right? walked off. He, His one shot, he blew it. Yeah. He froze up. He locked Under pressure. Up. That's right. Two and two on Braun. Two outs, nobody on. Eighth inning, nine, four Brewers. And that's fouled off. That song, Glory Days. Is this bad parenting? I saw I, I took Jacob who's my oldest as you know George just to, to a Springsteen concert when he was two because mom was out of town Yeah, that's kind of bad parenting and we couldn't get a babysitter so I took him to Springsteen I put earplugs in and he was walking up and down the aisles saying the boss I taught him the boss does he remember that he remembers everything <laughs> kind of does vaguely Three and two on Braun. It's Cedar with a nice pick. Dugout's weird. Now, dugout was wearing about. Now they're giving him the golf clap. That was pretty funny. It's a big man moving around over there, too. Snatched it. Had it the whole way. And finally a ball in play. Too low. Quick release. And he throws out his friend Ryan Braun. And that's all in the eighth inning for the Brewers. Rockies with six outs to work with. Trailing by five. Tula will lead it off. Fans follow at root sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when Colorado scores seven or more runs. Troy Tulowitzki leading it off against Willie Peralta. Let's quickly check in with Mark Stout. Mark? Drew George, Corey Dickerson hitting third this inning. It was a year ago today when he got to the show. He got to Washington, D.C. on a Friday night, didn't get into the game, started the next day, a Saturday afternoon game, went two for four. Go back to August 1st of last year. There are three Rockies that have had 100 games or more and have hit over 300. Troy Tulowitzki, Charlie Blackman, 
and Corey Dickerson. And has Dickerson turned it on this year? Four hits last night, second time he's done that in a game this year, guys. He's been really impressive. And his rep was that he could swing the bat, and he could swing the bat at this level, just like he swung the bat at the minor league level. He does damage, too, George. It's not, well, it's not throw out a single here and there. He does damage from foul pole to foul pole. Opposite field home run earlier in the ball game today. Two strike count on Tula. How about Troy. 31 games at home this year that he's played in, and he's had a hit in 27 of them. going at it right now. Not foreign territory at all for Peralta if he goes the distance in this game. He had a couple of them last year. Damage, trust Safe Flight online at safeflight.com. Phone number 303 287 Crowd of 38,020 this afternoon at Coors Field for the Rockies and Brewers. Brewers lead the Central Division, best record in the National League. Trailing only Oakland for best record in baseball. Oakland's in extra innings at home against Boston, tied at one. St. Louis is in the ninth. It's four to one lead over Philadelphia. Mets over Miami four to nothing. The rest will be night games in the National League. Three and two on Troy. Cincinnati eleven to one over Toronto in interleague play. Baltimore six to one over the Yankees. Seattle two to one over Kansas City. The White Sox lose to Minnesota four to three. Two days in a row for that to happen. Tampa six. Houston nothing. It's in the end. Did I say the White Sox lost to the Twins, or did I say the Twins beat the White Sox? Well, I which think I should say beat. Yes. Yeah, the Twins, Twins beat the White Sox four to three. Second, second day in a row. For Milwaukee, nobody out. To Lewitsky with a 3 2 count against Willie Peralta. And he earns a trip to first base. Good at bat for Troy. That is the first walk issue today by Willie Peralta. And yeah, they're both 23rd this year and well over 90 innings. They're starting to get some action down in their bullpen. Rob Wooden is throwing, and then you got Latroy Hawkins throwing, who has had a few days off throwing in the Rockies bullpen. Outside on Justin. Morneau's got a couple hits today two for three, two ribbies. 
sitting third in the National League in the RBI race. Stanton number one at 57 with 57 ribbies. Paul Goldschmidt's got 52 and then Justin. It's called you have a string of first basemen after Stanton. Goldschmidt, Moineau, Ryan Howard's got 50. He's come on. Moineau is one of a handful of players this year to have two five RBI ball games. Popped up left side. Ramirez makes the catch one out. Those guys that have produced five RBI games a couple times this year Jonas Cespedes, Jose Abreu, Giancarlo Stanton. Derek Norris of the A's. So a couple of A's have done it. What's a bigger surprise for you, Fraze? The Brewers or the A's? Brewers. Well, A's have done it the last two or three years. And the Brewers, uh, you know, they added Lowe's. They made a couple of moves uh, as far as Garza and a couple of other guys, but I didn't. I really didn't anticipate them being where they are in the standings in the National and Central right now. They've got a five game lead over the Cardinals, who are winning today 4 to 1. It is a final now over Philadelphia, Reds, and Pirates. Billy Bean figures out a way. I did tell you, you know, you say, well, go pattern this after the Cardinals or the Braves. If you want pitching, go do this. And then, you know, Billy Bean does something. There's another hit for Dickerson. And this is going to be potentially a double. It will be. Great hustle by Dickerson. Got to love, love the way he plays. Thinks two out of the box every time when the ball's hit out into that area. That's really appreciated. Now, the guy that should is Josh Rubble. Only because Rutledge got a chance to get a couple RBIs now, so to maybe one on a fly ball, he could get two on a base hit. But you watch him when he knows uh, this field so well. When the ball's hit out into the gap, Toodles can easily jog into third base. But it's the way Dickerson cut the bag and then his hustle and enthusiasm on how he plays the game. So he's becoming a fan favorite in a hurry. He ought to be. Plays it right. Seven hits in the last basically 18 hours. Yeah, and again, Josh Corey Rutledge, Dickerson. Josh Rutledge has hit two balls in the hole at shortstop, and Segura has made Gold Glove type play on both of those baseballs and uh, been able to throw Rutledge out. It's a couple of inches from getting into the outfield. Ten for 14 in his career versus Milwaukee. Corey Dickerson. Wow. Ricky Weeks doesn't want to be left out, so he comes in. Well, you want to the make sure what the done. signs are. Yeah, you got to make sure what the signs are. It's been a long game, there's been some men on base. And so as you look back at it, you know, you got to make sure if they switch something, they need to know. And if you're wondering why Ricky there as opposed to Gene Segura, the shortstop, the angle right now, Segura is pulled over, so Ricky's going to relay the signs to Segura. It's a little easier for him to see it. You know, far over Segura is if he can see uh, with Rutledge a right handed bat at the plate, if he can see in, see hard soft. That's a perfect angle, obviously. Mm, big slider, hard yeah, slider. One and two. Josh got him a pitch early in the count to turn on on a fastball. 
this is a good hard slider outside corner very well located. Outside of the swing path of Josh got fooled on the pitch. Whoa, three and two. Try to go to the outside corner with the fastball. Wanted to go get a little bit extra. The front side flew. He got extra. It's 97 miles an hour. Watch the front side. It's going to fly out, which is going to create a lower arm path. And that ball's going to slide and take off. See the boot boy jump back to be able to catch it. To Lewitsky at third, Dickerson at second. One out. Rockies down by five runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. That was 98 on his 109th pitch. Pretty impressive. That's a fair ball. Tulo's coming home. But now Dickerson's got to stay on the bat. Whoa. Corey started to go back to second. Well, I think the only reason he did it was because he thought Tulowski might be able to outrun Peralta and get back to third. So then he was going to head back towards second. And a lot of confusion and. Uh, We've seen a little bit of everything today. Ball hit right out in front of the plate. Peralta looked like he was going to go to first. He's like, you know what? I think I'll just save myself an earned run here. I'll just go tag Tulowitzki, Tulowitzki, and then uh, try to get the next guy. Well, he's not going to get a chance. He gave him eight, two thirds innings. Or excuse me, seven and two thirds innings. So Peralta pitched well, walks off. Rod Wooten will be next for the Brewers when we come back. Entry link link to what's next Sunday afternoon two o'clock start locally 1 30 pregame show here on Root Sports and it's a pitching matchup for the veteran Kyle Loesch is having a good year at Milwaukee. He's eight and two with three point oh nine and it'll be the third career start for former number one Tyler Matzik. 
Well, Ron Wooten's coming into the ball game now. This right hander, the last cut in spring training, as far as pitching staff was concerned. Very difficult decision for Rick Krantz and his uh, manager. Renicky he went three and one in 27 relief appearances last year with a 390 earned run average. This year, 25 appearances. He's pitched well. Another one of those pitchers that's overcome Tommy John surgery. He had it back in 2010. Missed the entire season. He was in the minor leagues at the time. Well, now it's more like if you haven't had it, you need to start identifying all the guys that haven't. Had you know, it. you're right. It, it really <laughs> is that way. Your son's had it, Parker. Look out. 2 0. Oh. Wooten was a big star at Chapel Hill, alma mater of Walt Weiss. Helped lead the Tar Heels to three straight College World Series. He's a former heel. They're a little apart. Not much. Couple of years. It, there was no crossover. Mm -hmm. Mike McHenry pulls it foul. Two outs. The Rockies have runners at first and third. Tulos at excuse me. Uh, Dickerson's at third, and Rutledge is at first. No, we're trying to, to kind of kind of right the ship. It was two appearances ago in Cincinnati. You didn't get anybody out. Six hits, five runs, all earned. This Guess what? Stay clear. Down the line and twisting foul off the end of the bat. Game was delayed by 23 minutes at the outset. It was word that the cell was going to move through. And so the tarp was put on the field for about, about 10 minutes. Fortunately, it moved away from the ballpark. Never really. Well, I went out on the back porch of rain here and looked, and I mean, it was dark. I mean, it looked like it was headed right on us and it just moved around. I relied on our. our uh, Resident weatherman Doug Marino who said it will not rain. Did he say that? And then he called Raz and said, Hey, take just take it off because it's not gonna rain. We can put it back up. We're gonna play baseball. It's gonna be about 28 minutes so before you can get everything done. Rockies leave two on. We'll go to the ninth. Nine four Milwaukee. Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Jeep. Visit jeep.com to learn more. Ninth inning at Coors Field. The Rockies on the wrong end of things. They're down 9-4. to four. Troy Hawkins will throw the ninth inning. And we're going to go to center field right now where a group of our friends are just hanging out. Hey, what are y'all doing? Hey, hey, hey you spelling, George. Spelling, How's it going? Spelling. Oh, boy. Here we go. Spelling. Yes. Throw Hershey's notes. Just do it once. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. They're all you taped know. down. Lots of wind out here. No, they're taped down. You can't uh, get them. <laughs> here's the question of the night right now. Have you ever seen a wild pitch produce three runs? 
No. Never. But now I have. No. Yeah, and that, that was embarrassing. It was. The airs in this game really prove costly right now for Colorado. We'll break it all down coming up in the Toyota post game show right after baseball. And guys, Throw just so you know, I backed Corey Dickerson for this homestand. Good choice by me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jenny, uh, Jenny, you make so many outstanding choices. Thank you. And, and that Thank was, you, Drew. And that was just yet another one. <laughs> wow, I really sense your George, sarcasm. George, throw Drew's uh, book out the window. This really no. went downhill fast. No. I think we have the ninth If he had a parachute on, I would, because he would jump to catch it. Let's I, look I, at LaTroy <laughs> Hawkins' numbers here. Right. 28th appearance, 288 on run average. 25 innings thrown so far this year, 11 strikeouts. Uh, LaTroy going to try to... Have a one, two, three, ninth. Get some work here in a nine to four ball game in preparation for his next save opportunity. Troy's been throwing. Look, Troy's been throwing the ball very well. Jonathan Lucroy 0 for three in a walk. And this is a fly ball to center field. Drew Stubbs will make the catch. Lucroy retired and. That'll bring up Carlos Gomez. Couple hits today, two for four. He's got a 17 game hitting streak. Gomez was with Minnesota. We talked about he was traded as part of a package deal when the Mets acquired Johan Santana. He spent only one year in Minnesota. It was kind of somewhat of a disappointment and then was traded on potential again to Milwaukee for J.J. Hardy. And he has blossomed into quite a player. Two pitches, two outs. You know what you call that, George? You call that a fish. Well, if he does it with one more pitch, it'll tie a record. It will. At every level. Every level of the game. Three pitches, three outs will tie a world record. Except, uh, well, I was going to say Ramirez, but we're going to get a pinch hitter. It's going to be Ileon Herrera. The Ford Strike Zone is powered by Ford cars. Big MPGs, smart technology, and unsurpassed quality. See what happens when fun meets the road. Ford, go further. So Ramirez being pinch hit for. And uh, former Dodger Herrera at the plate. Their utility uh, middle infielder. Nice play by Troy. Good inning for LaTroy. Good play by Troy. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Rockies need a very big rally. Down nine to four. the bottom of the ninth inning. DJ LeMay who's going to lead things off. Reminder, we'll be on the air tomorrow at 1.30 with the pregame show right here on Root Sports. And then uh, 30 minutes later, we'll have baseball for you. 
as the Rockies and Brewers wind up this series. The Rockies will be in Milwaukee at the end of the week, so the uh, old friends by the time next week uh, rolls around. Ilian Herrera naturally stays in the ball game for Ramirez at third. And Rob Wooten stays in the baseball game. He struck out McHenry to end the eighth. And the first pitch is inside on DJ at 90. Two and zero on LeMahieu, and three and zero. Willie Peralta goes seven and a third, allows four runs. Three earned on eight hits. He walked one and struck out two. Got a lot of ground balls. And that's a ground ball base hit for LeMahieu. Charlie Culberson's going to be the pinch hitter for the Troy. Wheeler's already hit the only left hander on the Rockies bench now Culberson will take his shot. Called strike on Charlie. Pretty shallow and a sliding catch made by Broad. Out at first. They doubled off LeMahieu. That's a tough read for LeMahieu. You got to be, you know, in, in the neighborhood of halfway to get the second if it's short hopped. But you also have to get back to first. And it was really close. Here comes Walt. Yeah, it was really close. Walt uh, not going to let the fight die. He's going to come back out here and he's going to have a conversation with the umpire out at second base. Mike Estabrook, who came around on the rotation, and they're going to go take a look at it. See if DJ's foot beat the throwback. Logan out there. Well, you know what? Hey, here's the deal. If, if, if he's safe, he's safe. Uh, and that's the thing about it. If Walt's looking at a game. Yeah, it's there. There would be you two have, outs. You and never you know give what? up. Not, that's exactly you never right. Give up. That's right. And Walt Weiss is never going to give up. This manager's challenge brought to you by Subaru's Eyesight Driver Assist Technology, a vigilant safety feature that gives peace of mind to every drive. See if we can uh, decipher it. And a dirt throws it up so you can't really see when the foot hits. You now the umpire in right field's got his right arm up too. See right here? First base umpire. Yeah, it, it just so you're not confused. He was signaling out on the catch. Yeah, but he turned around looking at first base and the catch was behind him. But I know what he was doing. DJ thought he was safe. That's why he's standing on the back. I mean, he 
is out. So it'll be scored 7 3, an assist for Braun, and now there's two outs, nobody on. And Nine three. I said seven three. Forgive me. Nine three. Even though there's two outs, nobody on. Ron Renicky with Charlie Blackman up is going to go bring in one of his eleven left-handers in the bullpen. So Tom Gorzolani when we come back. Maybe that's why Ron Renicky's taking uh, the opportunity here with two outs, nobody on, in a five run game to bring uh, Gorzolani in. He uh, pitched on last Sunday, scoreless sixth inning. He was reinstated on June 14th. He began the year on the disabled list, recovering from uh, left shoulder surgery. It's real unusual that you have to have five, four guys on the left side to bullpen. Yeah, sometimes you look around, clubs can't find one to get somebody out. The, these guys have four of them. Will Smith, their main guy, he pitched in the game last night. He threw the ball really well. Rick Grants and uh, Renicky are going to go to their bullpen. They'll bring in the left hander. Charlie Blackman will step up. Charlie a base hit the first inning Rockies like a long time ago. They had a two nothing lead got a great start to the ball game when Blackman singled Stubbs reached on an error. They pulled off a double steal. Justin Morneau produced a two run single and the Rockies looked like they were off and running but then four in the second four in the third. And many of those runs were unearned. And the Rockies fell out of it. We get a two run home run from Corey Dickerson. In the sixth inning. One and one on Charlie. Roll on. They ended up winning that game in extra frames, two to one against the Red Sox. This is bounced to second. Weeks has it, and the ball game is over. The Brewers have taken the first two here in Denver. They win this afternoon by a score of nine to four in a game where the Rockies played very poor defense. They committed four errors, just the 22nd time in franchise history they've committed at least four errors in a game. Willie Peralta gets the win. He improves to eight and five. Christian Friedrich, in his return to the big leagues, went six innings, but he takes the loss. He goes obviously to 0 and 1. And now the Brewers are a season high 16 games over 500 at 46 and 30. 
The Rockies fall to 34 and 40. Stick around. The Toyota postgame show is up next from right here at Coors Field. We get the final score of Milwaukee 9 and Colorado 4.